Okay, in this video, we're going to be doing number five from the 2025 Calc AB exam. So uh, this is working with uh, velocity and acceleration problem. Uh, particle motion, rectilinear motion, motion along a line. I don't know. Let's look at it. Uh, two particles, H and J, are moving along the x-axis. Between 0 and 5, the position of particle H at time t is given by x sub H of t. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I hate this subscript thing that they've been doing recently, but I don't know, I guess it's here to say. So x h of t is e to the t squared minus 4t, and the velocity of particle j at time t is given by vj of t equals 2t quantity t squared minus 1 cubed. All right, so one of them is position, one is velocity. For a, find the velocity of the particle h at the time t equals 1. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say that um, our velocity is the derivative of position. So uh, they started requiring that a couple years ago, so make sure that you are doing that. So vh of t is x prime, xh prime, x prime h of t. Uh, now we're gonna find the derivative of this. This is a chain rule problem. So the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times the derivative of u. So times the derivative of t squared minus four t, which is the quantity two t minus four. All right, so we have this. Now we just need to evaluate this at one. Um, so vh of one is gonna be e to the one minus four, and then the quantity two minus four. You could actually leave that, but I think it's easy enough to simplify. You should really leave it though. <laughs> like over the years, I've probably lost a lot of points by simplifying things I didn't need to. Um, all right, that's that. During what open intervals of time t between zero and five are the particles h and j moving in opposite directions? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so we're gonna need uh, the velocity of j. It's kind of written in a form that I don't really like because um, it's not completely factored, right? t squared minus one is really t plus one times t minus one, and then we're cubing it. So I'm gonna rewrite that just so that I can like sign chart this thing, not really worry about it. So we've got uh, vj of t is gonna be two t, and then I'm gonna do t plus one cubed and t minus one cubed. So now I can make a sign chart for that. I also need a sign chart for um, VH. These are, um, I don't know, they're like organized strangely. I kind of like screwed it up when I did this. So two is the only zero for um, the velocity of H, right? Because E to the T squared minus four T is never equal to zero. So we don't have to worry about that. So we can just fill in our sign chart for VH. It only changes sign at two and you go negative to positive there. For VJ, all the zeros are to the left, so I had to like just stack these kind of strangely. Um, you want them to be stacked in such a way that two on the green bar is the same as two on the like maroon bar line segment there. Um, so that's why I've kind of like shifted over. Uh, if we plug in negative a billion, we get a negative times a negative times a negative, three negatives, so it's gonna be negative. And then everything is to an odd degree, so you're gonna get a sign change everywhere. And you can check if you plugged in like positive a billion, uh, you would definitely get a positive. Now you can see the only place that you have opposite signs in your velocities uh, is between one and two. And our reason is just gonna be that the velocities have opposite signs there. So VH is less than zero and VJ is greater than zero. I think you could probably just say velocities have opposite signs on that interval as well. I think that would be fine. Um, and don't forget, you're only moving between zero and five. So uh, is there an opposite sign between negative one and zero? There is, but it doesn't matter because that's not on our interval. Uh, all right, so I mean, that's like a weird little twist. They seem to like throwing those sorts of things in now. Uh, let's look at part C. It can be shown that Vj prime of two is greater than zero. Okay, so they're just telling you acceleration basically is greater than zero. Is the speed of the particle J increasing, decreasing, or neither at time two? So we're gonna to need to know the velocity. Is the velocity positive or negative? I mean, we just made a sign chart for this, so we could uh, refer to that, but I'm just gonna like do it. So Vj of two is going to be uh, four, and then you get uh, four minus one and you cube it. That's definitely positive. We don't need to work out the value, we just know that's positive. And then uh, velocity and acceleration have the same sign. So we're gonna say that speed is increasing, uh, but I'm gonna be careful here because like they're giving us Vj prime, um, and what I want to do is relate that to the acceleration. So I'm going to say Vj prime of two is Aj of two. I don't like the subscripts. Um, they have the same sign and therefore the speed is increasing at t equals two. 
And I think that's all we need to do for that. Pretty straightforward. Um, let's move on and look at part D. So particle J is at position seven at time t equals zero. Find the position of particle J at time t equals two. Show the work. This is my favorite thing to do with the fundamental theorem. You kind of rearrange it, right? It, it would be the integral of velocity from zero to two is the position at two minus the position at zero. Rearrange it and we get that the position at two is the position at zero plus the integral from zero to two of vj of t. Um, so now we just need to do that. So uh, they gave us seven, we're going zero to two, and then sub in what we actually have here. So there's our expression, we're gonna integrate this. Now this is a really nice integral because uh, if we let u equal uh, the t squared minus one, then du is two t dt. This is perfect. We don't really need to do the substitution. So I'm just gonna say, like basically I'm looking at u cubed du, which would give me one fourth of u. So I'm just gonna integrate and say, um, we're gonna get one fourth of u, which is t squared minus one to the fourth from zero to two. Now we're gonna use the fundamental theorem. So it's seven plus one fourth, big quantity. Now we plug in two and we get two squared is four minus one is three. So we get three to the fourth minus, don't forget when you plug in zero, you don't always get zero. Sometimes you get other values. So it's minus, when we plug in zero, we get zero minus one is negative one. So negative one to the fourth. So this, we should stop here and just leave our answer. I'm not going to, but we definitely should. We're actually getting seven plus one fourth of 81 minus one. So one fourth of 80, one fourth of 80 is 20. So we get 27. All right, that's the entire problem. I hope this was helpful and good luck.